Thank you all so much for um, the opportunity um, to speak. I do not have a slideshow um, to to show you, but um, what I what I do want is to just give you a um, a realistic view of what what can happen. In 2018, April the 24th, 2018, I um, went to the hospital for just or a doctor's appointment just for a um, anatomy scan. I was 22 weeks um, pregnant. And when I went to the hospital for an anatomy scan, um, they could not find my cervix. So the news that they gave me was today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to send you to UNC and then you're going to get a surclage. Going to go in, going to, you know, stitch up your, your cervix and then we'll keep you overnight um, and then we'll send you home tomorrow. Well, that was not how my journey ended. Um, I went to UNC and the news that I was delivered was that you are too far along, um, you're two centimeters, and we cannot do this surclage. Today, you're going to have to have your son and he will not survive. So um, I'm, I'm looking around at the situation and I'm thinking, wow, I... Um, I planned a baby shower, not a funeral. How am I going to be able to get through this? Xander was born at um, 15 ounces and 11 inches long. And so my task on that day was to say hello and goodbye at the same time. Um, and when a lot of people ask me, what was it like doing that? Um, the only thing that I could, I could say um, is that it's like when light and darkness meet in the same spot, right? Um, because he was definitely the light of my life, but it was also a very dark time. In 2018, North Carolina had 806 infant deaths, infant losses. 350 of those were black. In 2018, Pitt County, North Carolina had 11 infant deaths. Every one of them were black. Every single one. So we have an issue. We have a problem. The problem is, is that a, a white woman with a GED has a better birth outcome than a black woman like myself that makes nearly six figures and has a master's degree. So statistics show that one in four women will lose a baby, right? Those are facts. One in four women, whether or not you're black, whether or not you're white, whether or not you're Hispanic, Asian, native, one in four women will lose babies. However, black women are two and a half times more likely to lose babies and four times more likely to lose their lives. There is a problem that's going on in our healthcare system. And our healthcare system was not designed to assist black people, right? So we can be honest and say that. The tough situation, the tough conversations that we're having is in this space. And in this space, we are all brave enough to say that the constitution, that the policies and procedures that were implemented and that were structured for the United States were not meant for black people, because black people were not people, we were, we were property. And so we have to make some changes that will take us from property to people. And we all have to be responsible for that. And so what I'm tasking everybody is, is that the black community needs to learn that we are deserving of resources and coverage. Absolutely deserving of it. We shouldn't have to beg for it. We should not have to rally for it. We should not have to cry for it, we should be able to have equal and humane services. When I contacted my doctor and I told them, I'm experiencing some cramping, I'm experiencing some spotting, it's some things that's going on, I think I feel my son in my cervix, they said, he's too young for that, you're probably, you're probably just constipated, right? That was my diagnosis. You are probably just constipated. If they had done 
a ultrasound, a vaginal ultrasound, the Tuesday that I went in before my son, uh, my son was born, they would have noticed that my cervix was funneling. But to them, my complaint was not valid, right? So we need in the black community what we have established here on this screen. We need educators and we need advocates. And all of us have to be responsible for that. It it is important for each of us to ensure that we are putting individuals that are change agents in office, not just going into a voter's booth and choosing who we've seen most on a sign or who we've seen most on a television screen. We have to be responsible for choosing the accurate people to put in office so that everyone will have access to care. There should never be a time where we live in the most developed country in the world and we have the worst birth outcomes than a third world country. There should never be, if we are in a, a situation and a space that we can take a heart from one person and put it in another person and make, and, and it works, but we cannot prevent black women from dying from birth complications and we cannot prevent black children from dying because they have been sentenced because they're black. We have to be strong and right and not strong and wrong. Right. So I'm tasking everybody on this this um, webinar on this this cast to stand firm in your belief. And the belief that we should all have is that everybody deserves to have access to care. Everybody deserves to be healthy. Everybody deserves to live a good and functional life. And we have to be vocal about that.